Free win episode 20. I feel like some mage is gonna die today. Oh yeah, she's ready to kill. Look at you, Harry Potter, with your little wand. She's doing this with the bird on her belt. Wearing down your mana. <laughs> it's not fair! Let's stop. If I just murder someone? Okay. <laughs> wow. I wonder what Freewin's kill count is. Human kill count. Episode 20, necessary killing. Oh god. Maybe that's how they captured the, the birds. Oh, it's uh, Aizawa. Hope you brought eye drops. Probably should. What'd you think it was? She's that crazy. She thinks everyone's like her. なんでそんなこと命令する必要あるの? I want to feel like I've dominated your character. Oh, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Oh, you looked at it. Even after being thoroughly defeated. That's what I thought she was doing, yeah. それで I want to dominate you mentally. You probably should. Let's be real. Waiting for you to blink. Oh no, don't play your game! Don't! What are you doing, you idiot? Man, biggest character flaw in anime is not, not being able to resist a flashback, a backstory, or idea exposition. Good, I hope so. He has an aversion to killing, despite his image. That's gonna go wrong one day, and that day might be now. Oh, Fern being the arbiter of not killing. Don't blink. Don't <laughs> その子は鳥を捕まえる魔法を師匠から God, this is so dark. Oh, thank God. Yeah, that would have felt out of character. It would have been upsetting. Here I thought it was going to be Fern and Yubel fighting. But so far it actually feels like their dynamic is not bad. Flower bending. And all I had to sacrifice was my entire shoulder and right arm. Speaking of Hisoka. That's why I'm going to I think the battle has begun looking at your chest. Oh, whoops. Speaking of Hisoka. Wow. Wow. I mean, I think if she actually had killed her, she wouldn't have said it like that. So far, Freeman's theory is intact. <laughs> you can just see it. 
And I feel like we haven't even seen the reserves yet of their strategy. No one can get past like the most basic things. Here we are depleting all our mana. The shark's probably dead. Did you kill him or knock him out? Just like a gentle zap. Okay, good. This is going surprisingly well. We have zero casualties so far, except for those people eaten by birds. But you know, who cares about them? Yeah, it seems like he's a big softy. Alright, this guy's gonna be more of a player than I thought. Oh, what? Wow, they have history. Here I thought his entire existence was to provide a kill for Yubel. Where is the non-noble selfish part? Yeah. They're saying that for different reasons, different meanings. You can still pass. Binding spell. Yeah, there you go. Where's your cage? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This is very circumstance-based. Good. That's a huge relief. I want it for myself. <laughs> Killing students. If they die, they deserve to die. I don't like you. Why is it that through so much of my academic career, especially college, I'd say, the relationship between professor and student felt adversarial? What are you there for, exactly? What is our goal here? Okay, that makes no sense, but alright. Thank you! Okay, I like her. Yes! Finally, someone gets it. What? No, no. Even Freerun. I mean, they raised the odds in their favor by doing the mana magic thing. It landed on her shoulder in a whole lake. All right, I'm doubling down on this. This is everything I thought it wasn't worse. It would be nice, actually, for once, to say that this guy is a caricature, someone blown out of proportion. The only thing fake about this for me is the magic. This is a very wide-ranging question outside of the topic of education, but what are we here for? What is the actual goal here? One of the things she just said is this is a battle masquerading as a competition. Why is it even a competition? <laughs> it's a battle masquerading as a competition competition masquerading as a qualification exam specific to education. What exactly is the goal? I think we have to decide. Is it to learn? Is it to gain skills that will help us become useful and productive in society? Is it a sort of caste system where we're using it to sort out who is high class, who is low class based on keeping the high class very selective? Is it actually just babysitting where we can't have young people gallivanting through these streets causing trouble? We just need to have something for them to do, put them in a room with a watchful authoritative eye until their brains are formed enough to not cause chaos. Maybe that's what it is. And if that that's what it is. All right, that's fine. But let's just call it that. But if it is about teaching students the skill, the skill itself, then that itself is the thing that needs to be evaluated and not anything mixed in with the teacher's ego or some kind of exclusivity club or trying to become your, your parent, surrogate parent and teaching you a lesson that actually is often a cover for malice that stems from the teacher's own insecurity about their life, their unlived dreams, their desire to be acknowledged, them wanting to exert their role or position to artificially extract respect where none is deserved. And I recognize there's always going to be some loss because there's such a variance in students and it will also depend very heavily on what kind of material it is. Not all fields of study are the same. So having a uniform teaching methodology and testing system that is perfectly fitting for everyone regardless of differences is, is nearly impossible. So some imperfection there is of course fine. But I think if you're trying to do your best to teach and to improve other people, you have to at least keep that in mind as the benchmark so that you're not getting drowned or lost in or wasting time with all the things that are irrelevant to the pursuit. So like I understand homework and tests and attention as tools, as like a means to an end, but they're not the end. So they shouldn't be the deciding factor in how one student is evaluated necessarily if there's enough time and space to individually evaluate. To give a personal example that I've mentioned in comments, but don't think I've mentioned in videos before, my final year of university, I took a psychology course. As an elective, immediately fell in love with the material. It was one of the very rare cases where I actually enjoyed reading the textbook. Like I read way more than the assigned reading. I aced all the exams. I got 105 on the cumulative final. And then I failed the class because I didn't hand in one assignment and I had poor attendance. And that elective class 
which I paid for, forced me to delay my graduation. Who was that for exactly? Who did that serve? Even talking about this, I can feel feathers ruffling somewhere because it's like, because you got to follow the rules, you know, you got to do what the teacher tells you. But why? If I've identified the goal and we agree that the goal is good and I complete the goal, why am I subjected to torment and pain? Because you feel disrespected because I didn't do things exactly the way you planned. Maybe you're insecure that I never needed you in the first place, that I was capable of doing it by reading the book, that you're not as useful or important as you thought you were or hoped you were, that you yourself kowtowed to authority and gave into things you didn't want to give into and accepted someone else's game, telling yourself that that's just the way things are, suppressing your own natural instincts because you told yourself that was the only way. And now you're stuck trying to defend that system. If it sounds like I have a massive chip on my shoulder about school, you're right. 100%. <laughs> because that's just one example in a long line of educational debacles in my what? 15 ungodly and horrific years of school. <laughs> The sadness in his voice about this, the concern, just overflowing from his voice. Dankle thinks it's the club thing. Another colleague discussion in the middle of battle. Oh, he's one of the first to know. Really? <laughs> Seems like a lot of people don't know. I guess we haven't met that many first class mages. Finally. Someone's paying attention. Why? Maybe in this case you bluff and say if you kill one of them, we kill all of you no matter what. Thank you, Denken. Denken. I'm waiting for the sympathetic backstory from Denken. I think that's what they're setting up for. This, this arc is setting up a whole, like, branching tree of a world of free reign. All these characters, all these backstories we're going into. Okay, I guess Dengen is like the best of us outside of the main group. Thank you. Thank you, Freerun. Thank you, Denkel, strangely. Appeared. Um, okay. What does she want? What do you want? This is the big bad? Knowing free range is going to ask him how to turn corn into broccoli or something into corn, something with corn or something light, like how to bring back the dead. Just like how this exam is making me think of the hunter exam in Hunter Hunter. This is also making me think of Nen in the sense that what good is money or political maneuvering or what have you, any of these material awards in the face of Nen, or in this case, this sort of life essence that is the underpinning of magic. Just like how Nen is really just spirit, so too is magic in a sense. I mean, there's also the element of it that's math and engineering. It is a very particular system, as is then, but it's also tied together really closely with emotions and, and love and other people and strategy, one's intrinsic nature. All of these things seem like such hollow pursuits, though I think what makes it formidable is that pretty much everyone has some weakness, and if Siri can give you anything you want, it wouldn't be that hard for any one individual to think of something that would be tempting enough. <laughs> This goes to my question of what's the goal. Yeah, what is the goal, man? What is the goal, Richter? Separating them. Honestly, if I'm freerun at this point. The exam's off. I don't need this crap. I'm protecting the two girls that I came here with. I'm finding Fern. We're banding together. I don't need to be in the party you assigned. Anybody who's trying to kill right now gets wrecked. And then we're done. You can keep your license. I don't need this. I don't need you. Good luck with all that. <laughs> I'm powerful enough to go into the Northern Lands. If you want to stop me, be prepared for the consequences. This is really tough, but at a very, very local individual level on the topic of what is the goal. What is your feedback loop? What is the reward stimulus you're looking for? If it's something like money or feeling the domination over others or wanting to believe you're better than other people, wanting to see people submit to you. If that's 
the the stimulus for feeling good. You're very easy to compromise. You fall into Seal's trap. I think it takes a lifetime to get here completely. But if you can like work at making your feedback center your reward, feeling like you are what you want to be as a person and feeling the kind of power that that self-autonomy brings, there's no going back. And suddenly you're uncompromisable, which itself reinforces that feedback loop because that feels amazing. And I think everyone has the, the wiring for that built in. It's just not fully developed or explored. And that's why we sort of all, almost all, basically universally have the same reactions to heroism on screen. We maybe can't say it and it's hard to foster, but we know it when we see it. It's a way more objective and real part of our hardware than you might imagine at first. Forget the test. If this is what it is, I don't want to be a member of this club anyway. I mean, there's a way to look at it where Freerun continuing this at all and any kind of parameter set by these people is demeaning of herself. The only authentic and ethical way to, to participate in this system is if you intend to do something about it and you're following the rules so that you have the legs to stand on, that you came up correctly through the system, understand the system, when you're placed by the terms defined by the contest in order to change the system for the better. Otherwise, you just get out. Curious what he wants. What do you want, Denkel? I mean, beyond the obvious, if he wants to use the qualification of first class mage to gain privilege into something, but just into his character, I don't know if I'll end up agreeing with him, but I already kind of respect him just for the fact that he's thinking on his own and he has a value structure in place. It may be the thing I was just saying where it doesn't seem like he likes this exam very much. He probably would construct it quite differently. He's not buying the worldview that comes with this obviously corrupt mage society, but sees using it as a tool to get something he truly wants, maybe to affect some change or something, I don't know. Man, this episode triggered me as I thought I thought it would. As soon as I heard the word exam and heard about licensing for someone like Freerun, I was like, here we go again. Speaking of which, what is Freerun's goal? You know, using Freerun, the character as a focal point of what I was saying, she really knows loves, understands magic. Yeah, they need someone in their party to legally get into this Northern territory, but her feedback loop, as I called it, her motivation, the, the essence of her feeling about what magic is, is so much deeper than anything that could be captured by like a regulatory body that it all seems so stupid and trivial and at worst evil, just like school. What was it that I just saw? Oh, it, this is random, but it was a breakdown of how difficult it is to get into the NFL. This is barely related, but whatever. It was something like, you know, this percent of high school students join their high school football teams. This percent of high school football players end up on D1 college teams. This percent of that ends up in the NFL. This percent of the NFL plays more than one year. And it ends up being some absurdly low fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting to have that perspective. And then the the, the bottom line under that was what is really going to pay your bills? It's not the NFL. It's your college education. <laughs> And that instantly turned my interest in the, the data to annoyance at the propaganda of it. Because you know what? If I was in a position where I had a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent of joining the NFL, to hell with my college education, even if it's 100% guaranteed. Because graduating from school guarantees nothing, except possibly debt. The antithesis of why most people are going to college in the first place. I also often feel this way when I hear one politician or another talking about schools, particularly like, we need more money for schools. And for me, it's like, I don't think money is going to solve the, the problem. Like, how much money do you throw into the whole? The underlying problems with school are so deep, money's not going to fix it. I think what a lot of people don't want to admit is that it's not going to be about the infrastructure in the first place anyway. It's going to be about the individual and their pursuit and their values and their, and what they bring to the table. You know, like one thing I learned very quickly about elite schools, having gone to one, is that what makes elite schools elite is not the school or the faculty. It's the students. It's that by creating something that a lot of people want to go to and creating rankings, the people who are the hardest working, the most adept at figuring out systems, the people most focused on the game itself, critically, even if those systems are totally arbitrary and not actually useful for the education of it. Like you could take any task of sufficient difficulty and put it in front of 100 people. And even if the test has no connection to anything else outside of the, the very specific features of the test, probably the most intelligent, hardest working people will be the highest performers on that arbitrary test, especially now where data is so readily available, of course, varying by the specifics of the field itself. If you are really dedicated to learning something, you can just do that on your own without all the BS. It's just difficult to go against the established system where people kind of demand obedience to to the established way of doing things because, because a big part of it is i think a way of maintaining a kind of club-like feature of society it's not so much a learning test as it is a general competency test of how well you can understand a system and conquer a system so that you can join the elite ranks but there's the obvious problem of what are those ranks anyway who are those people do you even really want to join that club do you need to join that club does it suit your purposes or is it this is it a way of people luring you into their worldview with the promise of great rewards great material rewards the people 
people I know who really learn stuff, they will report that they got a lot out of school. They will report that they had a great teacher. But a common trait between all of them is that they also brought their A-game. They were the ones that did the work. They put in the extra study hours. They asked questions after class. They did their own independent reading. They engaged with the material. And I have a good sense when I meet these people that, well, you probably would have gotten there with any teacher at any school or perhaps even without it entirely. It's about you and what you want for your life and what you want and what are you doing to get it. Outsourcing that agency to like a system or school makes you beholden to it in ways that I think are really, really risky long-term.